I'm back. As I'm sure you've heard, on December 1st, Tesla delivered their first round of the Tesla Semis to Pepsi slash Frito-Lay in Modesto. During this event, they shared some stats with us regarding their 500 mile drive, which was done at 81,000 pounds gross weight, but they didn't share everything. And fortunately, we can math about it. I'm Mikey, this is Cars and Guitars, and today we're talking about the Tesla Semi. If you haven't already watched Engineering Explains video on the Tesla Semi, I highly recommend it. It's a really good starting point as far as the specs and physics surrounding the Tesla Semi. He used a lot of reasonable estimates to come up with a lot of pretty solid conclusions. But since then we have some new data. So let's see for ourselves how much the Tesla Semi's range really is, how it truly handles the mountains, and something about operational costs that Engineering Explained missed. Let's start with the battery capacity. So it's been estimated by Engineering Explained as well as others that the battery capacity is going to be somewhere around 1000 kilowatt hours. But based on a tweet from Elon shortly after the delivery event, we can get a more accurate number. All we need to do first is calculate the range of the truck. So what is the Tesla Semi's actual range? Well, in this recent drive, a loaded Tesla Semi with a gross weight of about 81,000 pounds started in Fremont, California with a 97% charge and arrived in San Diego, California with 4% remaining on the battery. This means the truck used about 93% of its battery to go 500 miles. This gives us an estimated total of about 535 miles of range at 81,000 pounds. Obviously, we don't know the speed that the truck was traveling at, but that gives us some information. Now that we know the range, let's go back to the tweet. A confirmed efficiency of about 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile with plans for improvement and an estimated 535 miles of range, we would be looking at a roughly 909.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now this is based on the battery going from 97% to 4%. I can't see the decimals on the screen, so was it closer to 98% or 96% when it started? You know, was it closer to 5% or 3% when it finished? Well, with some more math substitution, we can deduce that the battery pack has to be between 892.5 kilowatt hours and 926.5 kilowatt hours. I'm willing to bet it's a 900 kilowatt hour battery pack, but we'll have to wait and find out for sure. Next is the semi's performance in the mountains. Engineering Explained showed how drastically the Tesla Semi's range is impacted on an incline, but once again we have some new data that actually gives us a little bit more insight. So how bad is the Tesla Semi in the mountains? Well during the recent drive from Fremont to San Diego, we saw the truck ascend more than 4100 feet before descending most of the way back down, but the part of the trip we're going to look at is Grapevine. This is a section of I-5 that I've personally driven dozens of times. At its steepest it has an incline of about 6% for 5 or so miles, and for context this is comparable to a lot of the steep mountain passes in Colorado. So from the data we can see that 274 miles into the journey, the semi was at an elevation just shy of 2,000 feet with 39% charge remaining. Exactly 10 miles later, the truck had ascended over 2,000 feet and had 34% remaining. Needless to say, this is trash, right? 5% in 5 miles, at this rate the truck would have 100 miles of range total. So sounds like Engineering Explained was right. But we missed something significant. At mile 308, that's 24 miles after the truck dropped down to only 34% battery, the truck had 38% battery. It was almost back to where it started as it entered Grapevine. But how can that be? Answer? regenerative braking. If you're a trucker, you're familiar with the Jake brake. This is much more powerful, much quieter, and literally recharges the battery. How much does it recharge the battery? Well, based on my scrappy graph, it looks like about up to 80% of the energy that was required to ascend the pass was regenerated on the way down. That's massive. This makes EVs significantly better than diesel semis in the mountains. It's almost like they're operating on a perfectly flat surface. The diesel counterparts, on the other hand, end up wasting all of that energy because they're forced to brake and decelerate on the way down the mountain, but none of that energy is restored. There are even more benefits to regenerative braking, and we'll cover those in a little bit. Engineering Explained also goes over charging speed and explained that very well, but again, that was under the assumption of a 1000 kilowatt hour battery pack. Because we know the battery pack is around 900 kilowatt hours instead, and because we know the new mega chargers are going to have at least 1000 kilowatts of charging power, possibly upward of 1.4 or 1.5 megawatts, the math regarding the charging time checks out. We should be able to see the Tesla Semi get 70 to 80% of its battery back in about 30 minutes. 
So we know the operational costs already deeply favor the Tesla Semi. But there's one more thing to consider here, and that's regenerative braking. I'm not talking about battery efficiency anymore. I'm talking about brake use. In a regular diesel semi truck, you're changing the brake pads every 30,000 miles or so, but that's not the case here. With the Tesla Semi, the majority of the braking is actually done through regeneration, which means you're not actually putting anywhere on the brakes. So for the 1 million miles that this battery is warranted for, you're probably never going to have to change your brake pads, which obviously on top of saving money saves time as well. So we talk about CO2 emissions from these trucks, but I don't think this covers some of the other nasty carcinogens that these trucks make. And that includes tons and tons of brake dust. That's not the case with the Tesla Semi. I'm telling you, people underappreciate how powerful regenerative braking is on Teslas. And Engineering Explained does mention one more amazing point at the end. The data is only trending more in favor of EVs as time goes by. Diesel engines have had over 100 years to get things right. You haven't even seen EVs in their final form yet. 